my name is James Barb and I'm the history columnist for Cheshire Life magazine. Since the age of 15 I've had a passion for history and archaeology and to find myself now writing and presenting films about history to share with you is beyond a privilege. Now we're here today at St Oswald's Church in Winnick in Cheshire and what a noisy church being situated right in the middle of two roads. This year I've been celebrating 21 years of broadcasting, writing and presenting and next year is going to be a pivotal year for TV presenter for history. A unique feature about my history articles in Cheshire Life that it's every one is supported with a film giving you more detail and more insight into the articles that I write. Stay with us now as we take a look at some of the articles that are written this year for Cheshire Life and also some excerpts from films that were written to support each article. For those who have visited Dunham Massey Hall in the past, you're all aware of the hall and the magnificent outbuildings. But are you aware of the buildings that lie derelict, hidden away in the woods? Whilst Dunham Massey Hall was built in the early 17th century, the Deer Park itself existed from early medieval times. The building is often referred to as the slaughterhouse, but this is actually a myth built up over time. Constructed in around 1740, it was originally built as a gamekeeper larder rather than a slaughterhouse for use by the Earl's gamekeepers. Venison was an important item on the Earl's menu and essential for the kitchen cooks to prepare sumptuous meat for the table. The deer were actually killed out in the park and their carcasses brought back to this building for dressing and jointing. AD 923 when a fortified village was set up here in Thelwall by King Edward the Elder. So important was this settlement that it even got a mention in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicles stated, AD 923, this year when King Edward with an army late in the harvest to Thelwall and ordered the borough to be repaired, inhabited and manned. He ordered another army, also from the population of Mercia, to repair and to man it too. Whilst we know that Edward the Elder did indeed build a fortified village here at Thelwall, what do we know about the man himself?
Edward was king of the Anglo-Saxons from 899 till his death on the 17th of July, 924. Poor Edward was the son of King Alfred the Great and when he took the throne he had to defeat a challenge from a cousin who had a very strong claim to the throne also. such a cold winter's day it's easy to imagine Edward and his Saxon army fighting the Danes in an attempt to defeat them and take back the control of Britain. here in Cheshire is an ancient hamlet dating back at least to the Doomsday Book and the church behind me, St Werberg's Old Church, was first used in 1187. Whilst the church outside is beautiful and picturesque, it's inside where a lot of details remain to be seen, and I have the key. Now it's well worth remembering that people have worshipped and prayed in this church for over 800 years and today we have special permission to go inside and take a look around. In the 13th century, to the north of Mobley in Cheshire, a church was built to meet the religious needs of the people. whilst the church was undergoing restoration, a Saxon church was found directly below. Welcome to History Walks. The earliest written evidence for a church on this site dates right back to 1206 AD when Patrick de Mobley formed an Augustinian priory. However, the Priory was short-lived and in 1240 it was annexed to Rochester in the county of Staffordshire. The earliest part of this church today dates right back to 1245 and in the 13th century it consisted of a nave and chancel all under one roof as well as having a detached separate tower in the year 1450 it was further expanded with the addition of a new roof and the expansion of the aisles. 
by 1533, the tower was completely replaced as the old tower had become unsafe. In 1888, the chancel was largely rebuilt. The church itself had a long association with the Mallory family. Now I'm a firm believer that the inside of the churches always give the greatest clues to the archaic history of the site, and St Wilfrid's is certainly no exception. Te lucis ante terminum, rerum creator pascimus, ut solita clemencia, sis presul ad custodia. Te corda nostra somnien, Te per soporem sentiant, tuamque semper gloriam, vicina luce concina. Some 800 years ago, the monks of St. Werberg's Abbey decided to build a church here in Presbury, in Cheshire. But to do this, they had to demolish an Anglo-Saxon church which already stood on the site. Why did the monks of St. Werberg's Abbey demolish and destroy such an ancient building? And what did they design for themselves? Welcome to History Walks. There's compelling evidence that a church stood on this site way back in Anglo-Saxon times. After the Norman conquest of England, a second church built on this site came into the hands of one Baron Hugh Caeveliok. He was a very powerful baron and he gifted the church to the Abbey of St. Werburgh in or around the year of 1173. Once in the hands of the St. Werberg monks, it was decided to demolish the Anglo-Saxon church. However, they replaced it with what we know today as a Norman chapel. The work on the chapel was completed in 1195. The Norman chapel served as a place of prayer for the vast parish of Presbury. However, following the Magna Carta and the death of King John, it fell into a state of disrepair. But in the year of 1220, the monks supported by the Davenports of Martin, the Piggots of Butley and the family de Corona started to build what became the chancel and nave of the church that we see today.
better than being out in the country taking a look at the history that surrounds us. Today we're in Great Budworth and welcome to History Walks. Welcome to St Mary and the All Saints Church here in the beautiful village of Great Budworth. The Church of St Mary was given to the Augustinian monks over at Norton Priory back in the year 1130 by William Fitz Nigel and Baron Hompton. Now Geoffrey de Dutton was an early benefactor of the church and at a later date so were the Booths of Twemlow. In 's part of the church that we see today is the Lady Chapel dated to the 14th century while the remainder of the church dates back to the 15th and the 16th centuries respectively. village of Gorsworth we've come to see St James's Church, a church dating back to the 15th century. The picturesque church of St James stands on high ground overlooking the medieval manor of Gorsworth Hall. Now we know that the Church of St James stands on an earlier site where we know for a fact that was once a Norman chapel. Now one of the things that St James is famous for here in Gorsworth is the medieval stone carvings of the grotesques and the gargoyles. Now there's no doubt that these carvings are some of the best I've seen in Cheshire and they really embellish the church and make it even more interesting. Now here in St James's Churchyard stands a medieval preaching cross, one of a few across Cheshire and it's ornately decorated with mythical beasts and dragons. Mm -hmm. 
St James is constructed from yellow and red ashlar sandstone and the oldest part of this church that stands today is believed to date back to 1430. St Michael's Church here in Marbury, Cheshire stands on a slight rise and it overlooks what is known as the Big Mere. We know that in the year of 1299 AD a timber wattle and daub church stood on this site However, in the 15th century, a stone church was built. Welcome to History Walks. St Michael's stands here in an idyllic landscape on the Cheshire Shropshire border. A schoolhouse also once stood here in the churchyard as far back as 1688, only to be demolished in 1824. The walls carved from local sandstone surround the church and date back as far as the 16th century. Now the one thing that you might not notice whilst looking at this church is the fact that St Michael's is shifting. Indeed, the sand upon which it stands has started to move. Indeed, in a survey carried out in 1999, it was found that the tower was leaning two feet away from the vertical. However, I don't think we're in any danger of seeing that tower come down anytime soon. <laughs> 